Hi guys, I wanted to give you a uh, demonstration or a tutorial actually on how to use Photo P to do the uh, Fruit Faces project. Now I wanted to also open it up if you'd like to use some other kind of food that would be fine. If you want to do a Food Faces project that would be fine. Um, and also, it, you know, if you'd like to use, um, if you don't want to use a human face, you'd like to use a pet, you can, or some sort of an animal face, that would be cool too. I don't mind that. So let's see. So here we are uh, with the fruit, and actually, I found a couple of different fruit uh, images that I wanted to try, and I think I'm going to go with this one because that's just a whole batch of uh, awesome strawberries. I'm going to save that, right click, and then save image as. And then I'm going to do the, uh, for the baby, I found some babies laughing, and I found this one and a couple of others. But to get this image, what you do is you right click, just like that, on the image, and then you'll get this options, these options, and then choose save image as. And just go ahead and click save. It'll it should go into your downloads folder. If if it's not selected, select your downloads folder and then click save. I already saved it, so I'm gonna not save that one again. So then you can go ahead and close these image uh, these tabs out. All right. Next thing we're gonna do is we need to open the image of the fruit. So you go to open from computer. All right, and so simply click on open from computer, and then we'll, we'll come in here. I'm going to grab the strawberries, just select it and click open. So to zoom out, what you want to do is you press and hold your alt key on your keyboard, and then roll your mouse wheel backwards, and that will zoom in and out. Rolling forwards zooms back in. Or you can grab the zoom tool, Press the Alt key and you get your minus. Notice that's minus that shows up and then click once or twice. The plus, when you let go of the Alt key, the plus allows you to zoom in. So, you know, bring it to about here, however it, it, it works for you, okay? Then grab the Move tool just to, I always like to get right back on the Move tool so I'm not accidentally hitting a different tool and doing something else to my design. Okay, so next step, we want to pull in the other image, uh, the, um, the face image, and I have the baby's face. I'm going to pull in a couple of different baby faces. You go File, Open and Place, all right, and then you can see I've got all three of them. They're different sizes, different size images. Now let's get this one here. You have to select the layer to move it around. Okay, so... Now, let's turn the eye on your layer panel right over here. Turn the eye off and just leave the one, one of your faces there and select that image, that layer. Uh, now, for this, I'm going to zoom in again because I'm just going to click once or twice, just like that. And then we can uh, manipulate what we want to manipulate here. And I think this one, I'm gonna twist it. I wanna rotate the image. So do it, hold control on your keyboard and then press T. No, don't do that. See now, I just, there we go. When you're in Photo P, if you do that, that was the wrong thing to do. Uh, it opens a new tab in your browser. So I just showed you something not to do, okay? In photo, uh, Photoshop, you absolutely can do that, but I always get this mixed up. So to do this in Photop, what you do is you click Transform Controls. There we go. And now you get the ability to do a couple of things. You can scale it up or down, or you can rotate your image. And to do that, I sc to scale it, you want to grab the, the node in the upper corners, and then hold your Shift key on your keyboard. That way it'll keep the width and height, uh, the right size. If you don't hold shift, you could accidentally ruin the image just like that. So I'm gonna press escape to get back to this one. Now I want to, first of all, I like the size. I'm gonna rotate it so that the baby is in the right position with that 
with that strawberry. And yes, I am going to expand the face up a little bit. All right, and then go ahead and hit the check mark up here to confirm it. And there it is. All right, now what we do here is I'm gonna turn off the transform tools. And the very next step, we're gonna add a layer mask, and that's right here. It's actually called a raster mask in uh, Photopea. In Photoshop, they call it a, uh, a layer mask. Click once, and then you'll see we it adds the white box, which is the raster mask. So grab your brush tool, and here's the trick. Now we're going to hit the default, white and black. That's the D right here. Just click on D, and it does that. The arrows, we're going to swap the colors. So the one on top is the one that we're painting with. And on a raster mask or a layer mask in Photoshop, when you paint with black, you are hiding. When you paint with white, you are revealing the image again. So this, this is called non-destructive editing, which means that you're not ruining the image. You're actually just hiding pieces of it. So let me show you here with the black. There we go. See, I'm hiding that image. And then if I swap those colors to white, I can bring that image right back. It's not deleting the image. If I used this tool, which is the, not this, that one, the, uh, sorry, this one, which is the eraser on the image, then that would actually delete parts of the image that, that we have there. We don't want to do that. So the next step we want to um, to take, <laughs> the next thing we want to do is to soften the brush. So first of all, to remind you how to make the, the brush larger or smaller, that's the brackets on your keyboard next to the P key. And what you want to do is there's the left and the right bracket. Right bracket will raise, here let's will raise the size of the, the, the brush. Left bracket reduces the size of the brush. Okay. Now what we want to do is probably, I mean, I don't want to make it too big, but I do want to soften the brush. You can see up here, it's a hard edge. You could raise or lower the size here or soften it like that. But I want to show you an easier way, or not an easier way, another way. Press and hold the shift key on your keyboard and then use the left bracket as though you are lowering the size, but holding the shift key will just soften that brush. Now, if you, ra uh, you hit the right bracket, it will make it a little bit harder and go all the way to the hardest. Now, just to show you, this is a hard edge. Wait, let me flip it to black. Okay, this is painting with a hard edge. If I go shift and click the left bracket one time, this is what it looks like. It's a, just a little bit soft. If I do it one more time, and then one more time, you can see it's getting softer and softer and softer. Okay, so, uh, and that is what happens when I, you know, raise or lower this as well. Okay, so we want a super soft edge. That's really what we want here. And I'd like to make the brush a bit larger. I made a mistake. Okay, so I accidentally clicked on the middle of the face there. I'm gonna undo that last move that I did. And there, let me show you how to do that. You just press Control and then Z. And it does one undo, Control Z. And then here's your history panel right over here, just so that you know, by the way, if you click on these, you'll find that you can actually click your way through the history that you've just done in the, uh, you know, in previous clicks. All right, so now back to what we're doing. I'm just going to go ahead and, zoom, uh, you know, go around the, the face, get the hard edge of the face to disappear, trying to leave the eyes and the mouth and the nose, but I am getting everything else out of there. Now I want to see what's up above here. So if you press your space bar, that gives you the hand. And then you click, you left click, and that'll move the panel down, your artboard down, so that you can see what's more, what's on the upper part here. Because we're zoomed in kind of closely. So let's get our magnifying glass. 
press the Alt key to zoom out a little bit. Now that's, and then I'm going to zoom back in, just clicking on, just doing a left click. Okay, it's okay. I mean, I it's all right. It kind of fits, but you notice that we blurred out too much of the uh, the uh, the eye area here and the mouth. So I want to bring that back. Let's get the brush and flip it back to white. And then I'm going to reduce the size of my brush just so it's not too big and then paint that back in here. Just, just little clicks. Just click and drag. Click and drag. There we go. Click and drag. Alright. Next step. The next step is to go ahead and uh, we need to change the color of the face. So I'm going to do something here by, well, actually what you want to do is you double click on this layer, but don't double click on the, the name. If you do that, what happens is it's going to want to actually change the name. It'll want you to type in there. So we want to double click down below. Actually, let's see. Okay, I think what we're going to need to do is open this up. The name is really kind of long. So what we do is click here, click and drag. There we go. We need a blank part of the layer. So now you, I can see a blank part. Double click. There we go. It gives us the layer style dialog box. And to change the color, we'll do a color overlay. Click check mark on the color overlay. And then I'm going to select that tab. Just click on it over here on its name. And it's already set to red. That's the default, but it's too bright of a red. So I'm going to click once on that color. That brings the color picker. The color picker. And then what, what I'll do is with the crosshairs, let's come over here to, no, like, yeah, find a good, there we go. Oh, wait, let's, let's pick over here. That's good. Maybe, maybe like, like that right there, right there. And then click OK. Now, we're not done because all we did was color that image. We put a color over that whole image. So if we change the blend mode, this changes the way that this color, color overlay affects our image. So for instance, darken or multiply. That's OK, but I think overlay might be good. No, let's go down here to color. No. Hue? No. Maybe it is multiply. Darken. No, those are too dark. Color burn. We're just going to go through all of them. Linear burn. Darker color. Screen? No, 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 no. Overlay. There we go. Let's, maybe it's in that set. Soft light. Hard light? No. Vivid light? No. Uh, pin light? No. Hard mix? No. Okay, so we're getting in there. We're, we're, we're figuring it out. Um, overlay again. Let's look at overlay. And then drop the opacity of over, overlay down a little bit. Kind of like that right there. Okay. Now I think I'm going to change the color even a little more. Let's see what it looks like if we choose. I, we probably had it okay, actually. Like that right there. That's a darker color. Okay. Now, let's zoom out. Press Alt. <laughs> That's kind of funny. All right, let's, let's do the next picture. I'm going to do this baby right here, and we're going to put put this one, let's see, on this one right here, on that guy right there. Okay, the picture though is too, the, the face is not enough, not covering enough space, so I'm going to click on the transform controls, press shift, click and drag, just to about there, and then press the check mark. Now we're going to add a layer mask, okay? Painting with black with a larger brush that's super soft. All right.
right now, I, of course, I've done way too much. Let's reduce the size of the brush and swap it to white and paint some of that guy's face right back in there. And then, of course, I'm doing a little too far out. We got the hard edge of the face showing, so flip it right back to black. And now we can play around with this edge right over here. There we go. Nice. All right, now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to grab the brush. I'm sorry, I already have the brush. Grab the white and let's drop the size of the brush down and then just paint inside here. There we go. Let's bring that little cheek out there. Okay. Now, we need to blur it in there. We need to change the color. That's not bad, actually. It actually looks pretty darn good. Oh, this, this. And turn off the transform tools. Okay, we're going to double click on the blank. Actually, let's see here. If we right click on this. No, oh, let's see. Facts. Can we copy the layer style? Yes, we can. So in here, check this out. If you, if you click on this arrow to open it up, click on effects, and then go to layer style and copy. And then come right over here, click right click and go to layer style and paste. Ta-da, it's a shortcut, right? Super easy shortcut. And now you can actually, you can modify that if you wanted to change the way that the color looks on that particular face. Just come in here and double click color overlay. And then you can modify any aspect of it that you like. All right. Now, I'm, I'm going to stop there as far as adding uh, faces and adding, uh, you know, things to this. You, I have shown you how to do, how to do a photo composite using photop.com, and so uh, now I'm going to quickly show you how to save your work, and then be able to turn it in. Okay. So to save your work, you simply go to File, and then uh, you can save as PSD. Let's see if it allows it without having an account. Oh, look at that. Okay. That's awesome. I didn't realize it would do that. So it just downloaded the PSD. The PSD file is a Photoshop compatible file. And it should allow you to open it up to see all of these layers. Okay. If you were to save it, like export it as a JPEG, that flattens it. So you don't save any of the file, any of the layers or layer uh, mask or raster masks in, in the, the image that you have currently. When you save it as a JPEG, it flattens the whole thing and you have just a picture. So when you want to save all of your layers in from Photoshop, you do it as a PSD, that which stands for Photoshop document. All right. In this case, it's a photo P document. All right. So now let's, let's test that actually. I'm going to close this out. Let's open this right here and let's see uh, to where it is. It's in my downloads folder. So let's do that. Open from computer and then go to the downloads, strawberries, open. And look at that. You've got, we've got all of the layers, all the layer styles, all the effects, everything is there. Okay. So that's how you do the save. But here is what I want you to do. If you're going to save, if you're going to turn this in, uh, if you're all done, save the PSD and upload that to your Google Drive to save it. But do not turn in the PSD to the Google Classroom assignment. If you're going to, going to um, export it as a JPEG, that is what I want you to do in order to turn it into Google Classroom. Export it as a JPEG and you just go like this click and you'll get this dialogue right here notice the image size is really big it's 3100 by 3124 pixels by 2109 that's pretty large don't worry about it that's okay I like large files that's fine then just make it a hundred percent quality you don't have to reduce the quality at all hit save that now downloads to your uh, download folder Okay?
that's all there is to it. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions or if any of this is unclear at all. All right? That's it, guys. See you in class. Bye.